Jory on BPX TV. Wonderful. I'm so proud of you. Yes, yes. Fabulous. Today we're here at the Miami Gate College. We talked about uh, with the real masculinity product for her hair. She's gonna tell us a little bit more about it today. Eve, thank you so much for blessing us, gracing us of your presence. Oh, it's uh, March, the month of women's international. <laughs> Welcome with Talk with Jory on BPX TV. As you know, we are in the month of March, which is the month of Women's History Month. Today, we're going to have the privilege of chatting with our own, uh, the beautiful, the talented Felicia Ross. She's been honored and she is more than deserving of that honor. So we're going to have a chance to chat with her. Stay tuned with Talk with Jory. We'll be right back. Allô. Allô, oui. Quand est là? Bella, je suis Zovola. Qui ça? Ma conduit. Moi, non, Charlie Bloom. Gepiai, gen cadeau. Qui ça dit? Gepiai, gen cadeau. J'arrive tout de suite. Piaï, piaï, piaï. <laughs> Shelly Bloom's fashion clothiers, toi costume, toi mouchoir poche, toi cravate, toi chemise, toi pay chaussette 373. Shelly Bloom, Shelly Bloom's fashion clothiers, number one in America. Gepi yai, ge kado. Na Shelly Bloom. Kon samble du. BBX TV Rezo. Wow, beautiful. Hello, ladies. How are we doing? Wonderful. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. How what is your name? My name is Anika. Hello, Anika. And I take it you are the? I'm the marketing coordinator for Creole Sans. Beautiful. You look so young. Yes, I am. Uh, have you, did you graduate from Miami Dade? No, I did not. I went to the University of Central Florida in Orlando. Beautiful. And I take it you studied marketing, of course. Actually, no. I studied uh, radio and television broadcasting. Well, we should be switching places because I did study marketing. Oh I studied goodness. marketing. <laughs> International business and marketing. That's wonderful. 
Tell us a little bit about Essence, Creole Essence. Essence yes. So we're a Haitian-owned company. Um, our hero product is the Haitian black castor oil, or as Haitians know it, l'huile mascriti. Yes. So what's special about us is that a lot of people don't like the original castor oil because it's thick, it has a smell. So what we did is we actually mixed it in with um, some other essential oils. So as you'll see right here, we have that original the raw, straight from Haiti. We work with Haitian farmers. Nice. Um, but we also have this peppermint. And you know, it smells great. The consistency is a little bit lighter. So people love having a variety. This is a mango, this is a lavender, and this is a light blend for people with straight hair. Mm -hmm. Because when they put a thick oil, it can make their hair greasy. greasy. So this being light is perfect for them. Um, so, yeah. so basically, it's the same castor oil, but with different flavor. Exactly. Different essential oils, essential so different oil. blends. Depends on which scent you, fa you exactly. favor. But of course, the result is the same. Absolutely. Now, it's supposed to thicken your hair as well as lengthening it. Exactly. Wonderful. So it promotes scalp um, circulation, so a lot of people who use this have maybe alopecia, mm -hmm. maybe postpartum hair loss, maybe you went through chemo. Or maybe you just lost your edges because you do a lot of protective styling. Like I have. <laughs> well, okay, after this, we'll, we'll get I you definitely some. need to get me one. Yes. <laughs> so. Now, let me ask you, would it be only for the hair or as well for your body? Can you? Yeah, absolutely. It can definitely be used on your body. Um, but like I said, most people do it for hair, but it's also really moisturizing and can work well for your body. Wonderful. I'm so proud of you and of your parents and of the company, of course. I remember seeing you guys on uh, Shark Tank. Congratulations. And now you guys are a very successful company. So I'm so proud of you and I wish you much, much success. Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome to BPX, Natalie, the one and only, the beautiful, talented Natalie. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us your time, your presence. Tell us more about your firm. Okay, my name is Natalie DeMesman. I'm an attorney. I've been an attorney for more than 22 years serving the Haitian community. I, my law firm is the Advocate Consulting Law Group. And basically, we, we do different types of law. We do immigration, we do probate. A lot of times people don't know what probate is, but basically if somebody dies with, with a lot of assets and the heirs want to get that asset, they have to go to court in order to get that asset. For example, um, sometimes there, um, there are houses that are left behind by parents and the children want the houses so that they can either sell, refinance, or put under their name, they have to go through probate to do that. And I help them with that process. And we also do a personal injury, and we also do what is very important is title. So when people are buying or selling houses or refinancing, we represent them during the transaction. Ladies and gentlemen, she does it all. One-stop shop, you get everything you need. Thank you so much for having us, and we appreciate you. I'm sure you're here for the beautiful Miss Felicia Ross, of course. Yes. Actually, I'm one of her sponsors because I do believe in the organization and what she's doing in the community for women. So I'm one of her sponsors today. And that is what it's all about. As you know, it's uh, March, the month of Women's International. Therefore, we supporting each other is the way to go. Thank you so much for your support. We love you in the community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sounds like we all have put in our bellies. So good morning. My name is Cece Rodriguez, and I'm the Chief Criminal Officer here at the Idea Center. Miami College's Innovation and Entrepreneurship Hub. We're really excited to welcome all of you today, whether you are students, alumni, community members, faculty, staff. Thank you for joining us today for our Lunch and Learn with Ms. Felicia Ross. We're really excited to get to her in just a minute. Um, so our Lunch and Learn series is all about exposing our students and those in the community that join us to the entrepreneurial work that is being done right here in Miami. Um, and Ms. Ross is just a perfect example of that. Um, and she's someone that a lot of our students will see themselves in. Singer, songwriter, artist, entrepreneur. She is a one woman show and she's gonna talk to all of you today about what it takes to make it in her business but also in whatever it is that you're aspiring to do. 
What we do at the Idea Center is a couple of different things. We work with community businesses that want to grow their businesses. We're a resource for them. We work with our faculty and staff. And we also work with our students to either help them start and grow their businesses or help them become a little bit more entrepreneurial in everything that they do. Of course, the work that we do here would not be possible without our partners in the community and beyond and our sponsors. And today we have three of them with us. We have Creole Essences. If you want to. <laughs> Patricia's Canvas. She should be somewhere in here as well. Advocate Consulting Law Group right here as well. Thank you all for joining us today and thank you for also supporting the work that we do at the Idea, at the Idea Center and Miami Dade College in general. I encourage all of you to talk to them when we finish, when we go out into the lobby and just really get to know the work that they are doing. And obviously at the Idea Center, the work that we do would not be possible either without the support of Blackstone. Um, we are a member of the Blackstone Launchpad, and they really are committed to advancing entrepreneurship throughout more than 40 schools in the United States and abroad. So really want to thank them as well for bringing us all together today. And with that, I will introduce Yanata de Suber, Professor of Entrepreneurship here at Miami Dade College, who is going to kick us off today. Thank you. Thank you again. So my name is Professor Yonathan de Souvre. I want to welcome you all here to the Idea Center, because the Idea Center is not just about ideas, we're bringing those ideas to life. And as Cece said, we're going to shout out Felicia Ross for giving us our time. Um, I want to shout out also uh, Nanny DeMessman of the Advocate, the Advocate Law, Law Group, <laughs> of the, uh, the Advocate Consulting Law Group, and Crayol Lessons, and Patricia Canvas. But without further ado, um, because not only is it um, National Women's History Month, but a lot of I, I am proud to not only be a member of the uh, Miami Dade College community, but I am proud to be Haitian. And one of the things, how many of us are Haitian or friends of Haitian? <laughs> and so, what brought this together was union for la force and practice. What does that mean? Uh, there's unity and strength, or there's strength and unity. And so, to, to lead that off, we're going to bring in um, the legendary uh, uh, Haitian legend, Amos Coulouge and Casita to lead us into the one, uh, they're gonna just sing a song uh, that talks about the Haitian, uh, the Haitian ancestry and what brings us here. It's just one minute and right after that, the, the, micro, the microphone will go to Felicia Ross. So ladies and gentlemen, make some round, a round noise for Amos Kounard. <laughs> with Jory on BPX TV with the one and only Marjorie Germain. Today we have the privilege of chatting with one of our own. As you know, this is the month of March, which represents the, his, the Women's History Month. And they are honoring the beautiful, the talented, the gorgeous Miss Felicia Ross. For all of you that don't know me, I'm Felicia Ross. I'm not performing for y'all today, but I'm going to teach you guys how to get 
to where I'm, where I'm at doing what I do. Where are the artists in the building? Who's here because they want to learn how to be an entrepreneur? Yeah. Yeah. You see, y'all are going to be talking to me today. It's not just going to be me up here talking. So look, I want to know a little bit about what you guys want out of this session. Who, what kind of artists are you? Talk to me. Singers? Where are the singers at? Singers, okay. Only one, two. What kind of artists are you? Poetry. Okay, so writer? Creative. Okay, what kind of creative? I make clothing. Okay, so designer? Okay, what else? What other creatives we have in here? So writers. Okay, so we got writers, we got singers, designers. There you go, what do you play? You play the bass. Okay, great. I play the piano. So we got musicians, we got singers, writers. What about what, what other stuff? We got designers, movies. movies. Okay, so we got visual producers, uh, videographers, photographers, right? So what's funny about this, this topic of entrepreneurship is that everything that I'm going to teach you right now today is applicable to all those jobs. It would also be applicable if you worked in the medical field as your own boss. I don't know, working for a doctor. It would also apply if you had a small business, let's say you owned a bakery, right? It's really funny because a lot of people wouldn't assume that these things go together. So when you think about entrepreneurship, what does entrepreneurship mean to you guys? What is an entrepreneur? Somebody to take risks. A life yes. skill. A life skill, that's a good way to say it, who takes risks. What else, but what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? Okay, for themselves. Yeah, okay. But what does that mean, though? What does it mean? Like, okay, we're at a college, so I mean, in, in like the book sense, what is an entrepreneur? A pioneer. You have your own business. That's the first thing. A pioneer, yes. What else? Innovator. Exactly. So an entrepreneur is somebody that works for themselves, right? Usually an entrepreneur is somebody who has multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. Don't we like that? Yeah. I saw all y'all start smiling. <laughs> multiple streams of income, right? But that also means that you need to understand the business behind what that requires of you, right? Okay, so I wrote it down in, on your sheet here. This is my bullet points. I encourage you guys to take notes. One of the secrets of any success that I have is that I write down everything. Once you write it, it comes to life, okay? And so the first thing, we're gonna talk about some formal stuff. This is the not fun stuff, the first part, right? This is why I feel a lot of artists fail when they wanna launch a creative business because they think, I could just be the artist, right? Somebody else will do it for me. A, that's how you lose money. B, that's how you lose control. Those two things, I don't wanna lose, right? C, it's also how people can come and steal from you. That's why you've heard all these sad, sappy stories about artists getting robbed. It's usually because they don't understand the mechanics behind their own business. And they're just workhorses for somebody else. We don't do that around here at Felicia Ross uh, Music Enterprises. So we're gonna, we're gonna speak the life into you so you can take your business by the reins and go out there and make some money, okay? Who likes money? Yeah. I, I like money a lot more than y'all got. Yeah, money. All right, so to me, the question I asked you is, what is an entrepreneur? What, is the, what makes somebody an entrepreneur? I wrote it down on your thing. That's the first three things on this list I want you to understand, because this is where I think people have no clue about the business of art, artist and entrepreneurialism. Entrepreneur, or somebody that works for themselves, basically means three things in the business side. It means you're responsible for your own tax liability. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, scary, right? Tax, the word tax, ugh, it's like a boogeyman. People are afraid of it, right? But actually, the more you understand what taxes are, or you don't even need to understand what they are. You're basically paying the government to, to help do all the things in the country to fund public things like highways or education. You don't even need to go that deep. Supposedly your own Social Security and Medicare, right? right. But when you, work for your, when, you, when you work for a company, anybody who's ever worked for a company has ever gotten a pay stub and you see mad and your money got taken out, <laughs> right? We don't like that, right. right? When you're an entrepreneur, you are responsible for telling the government, hey, this is what I owe you. Which means that A, you could be in a lot of more deep hot water if you don't understand that. But B, you can also make it work for you because 
Guess who's the first people getting they stimmy when a, a, a natural disaster or tragedy happens? Those people who are connected to the IRS who have the information given to them. Or the first person to get their refund, <laughs> it's usually Felicia Ross because I have all my stuff together, right? right. A, you have your first, the tax liability is the number one thing I want you to understand. We'll get to that later. B is retirement. Who's ever heard of a 401k? Do you know what it is? Um, exactly. Sure. It's okay. Girl, there's people that have 401ks and they don't even know what it is. We'll get to that. But a 401k, all these things are just formalities. I'm gonna speak in layman's terms because I'm an artist. I sing songs, right? It's not supposed to be convoluted and scary, but because there's forms and the formality, it sounds more confusing than it truly is, right? But back to, the, back to our bullet points list. When you're an entrepreneur, you're responsible for your own tax liability. You're responsible for your own retirement planning. That's where the 401k is when you work for a company and they help you, they set up that system of retirement planning for you. You as an entrepreneur, you gotta do it yourself. Because when you turn however old you plan on retiring, who are you going to look for for the money that you need to, to uh, survive? You've got to use the mirror because you're looking at yourself. Okay? So we'll get into the, the, you know, more about that, but that's number two. The third is the health insurance. Ooh, another scary word people don't understand, insurance. What is insurance? In case something happens. In case something happens. And there's lots of different versions of insurance. I'm sure we've heard of a life insurance. If you're a parent, you probably have, hopefully have life insurance on yourself for your children. Or health insurance. Everybody in this room should have health insurance. Don't tell me if you don't. I'll help you figure it out after if you do. And if you're under the age of 26, your mommy and daddy probably has given it to you, for you. Go get your teeth cleaned. Go get your, your annual physicals. Because when you paint it for yourself, you're going to wish you were more appreciative of oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sure I'm telling y'all college students. <laughs> Trust me, use it. But that's basically what it means to be an entrepreneur, okay? It's not a big, confusing, convoluted thing. It means you gotta have your own back. But also, if you have your own back and you know the information, who better to protect you than yourself, mm -hmm. right? So we can get into all of the, the formalities, but since I only have a short amount of time, I wanted to just kind of run over for you the basics if, you know, and you can go in depth about looking up what these things are. A Roth IRA, as I have next to retirement planning, that's one of the accounts that you have to protect yourself, or a self-employed pension, S SEP IRA. That's just what, as a self-employed person, entrepreneur, you have as far as your retirement planning instead of a 401k. But no matter what business you're in, if you work for yourself, those are the things that you need to do to protect yourself and that you'll be responsible for in order to say, I'm a business. Now, let's talk about entrepreneurialism in business. What does it mean to have a business? To be of service. Okay. Let's hope you're of service. You don't technically have to be of service to be a business, but if you're a good business, yes. What else? I mean in a technical, I'm, I'm asking in a technical aspect. What does it mean? Having people working for you. It could be. Doesn't have to be, but good guess. It could be. But some, some, most don't. Running the show at the same time, taking all the risks. That. But I mean in a technical sense, and this is why I like to ask the questions, because these are the things that, that make the people that do it and don't. Do okay, let's see you guys. Yes. Do you mean being incorporated? There we go. Having a business really just means that you have registered a business with, in Florida at sunbiz.org. You can pull that up. Can you? You pay a fee, you give a name to your business, they give you something called an EIN. That's basically your, that's basically your company's social security number, yeah. right? You have a business that you register, you create the name. Here's one of mine, or here's a few of mine. Let's click, so I have four different businesses. I have Felicia Ross Music, which is obviously my music production company. I have Felicia Ross copyrights. So those were, as this paper says, the little copyright symbol. That's my business on where all of my musics are copywritten, any books that I write, any lectures I create. That's the monies that go to that business. I have Felicia Delena Publishing, which is my publishing company, where I get all the royalties that drop into my account from songs that I did 10 years ago. We'll talk about that later. What's my last one? 
Felicia Le oh, and Felicia Ross trademarks. So everything, when I'm doing stuff like this, like making my beauty products, or partnering with a clothing line like this one that I'm wearing today, the money's going to that bank account. But what does that mean? Having a business means you have an EIN number, a business bank account. Now you're ready for business. That's what really it means to have a business. And it, that doesn't make me someone that does any of the stuff that you guys said, which is actually the, the heart and soul of what a business is. That this is the formality that makes you legally a business. And that's when you can start really making moves. Because I found, especially in the creative world, a lot of people, um, here Emma, you can go to my, let's open my website. Or let's open sunbiz.org. There we go, just go to the, the, head, the head of it. Just sunbiz.org. A lot of people skip out on the formalities, <laughs> and mainly because they don't want to pay the fees that come along with the formality. Have you ever heard the word tax deduction? Have you ever heard the word tax refund? These like, these, this nomenclature that people like to use or talk about, you ain't getting any of that stuff without these formalities, right? right? And that's what I think a lot of people fail to understand because they might say, and I've seen it myself, I'll, I'll be working with a company where I'll say, hey videographer, send me a, a, a W-9 so I can pay you, so that I can legitimize this payment, so I can get a deduction, and they're gonna, they get afraid. Oh no, tax paper, I don't want to. That tells me immediately that you ain't making real money and you are not a legitimate business. You see what I'm saying? I know a lot of artists who have done stuff where they'll go and they'll do a, let's say they're doing a performance for a college. I'll get, I get called by colleges a lot of the time to perform. And they say to me, Felicia, we need a W-9 from you. And what is that? It's just a paper that says, hey, when you pay me, you're paying my company, here's my EIN, which is my what? My business social security. Call it, that's not a formal thing. I'm just using layman's terms. That's my business's social security. That's my business's identification number to the government to say, hey, she's a business, you can pay her. If I don't have that paperwork, the University of Massachusetts cannot pay me. There, then I lose the gig. Or they go hire someone who does have that formality, right. right? So, or when I'm saying, hey, uh, government, I wanna, I wanna buy this book, 475 Tax Deductions for Businesses and Self-Employed Individuals, and I don't wanna pay, I wanna pay $20 less on my tax liability because this is a write-off. I can't do that if I don't have a business. Okay, so these little formalities make or break your ability to save money in the future as well. Okay, so what have we learned so far? Formality. Formality. What makes a business? Having your social security. Registering it and having your business, your business social security, which is called what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll, you don't have to, but you should if you're running business, you have a bank account, that a business bank account attached to that EIN. Now you're ready for business. Traveling to Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, I have well-located and beautiful apartments for rent, short-term and long-term. Wish to buy or invest in real estates in the Dominican Republic? Contact me. Looking for a great vacation package in the DR? I am only one call or text message away. WhatsApp 305-834-1458 www.vacancesatbaba.com N'importe côté haïtien est sous la terre, il y aurait été marié à Kilti pays. C'est dans la logique ça même. Tendez voir Kilti a édition Lipli sous direction pour être Isaac Volsi a présenté et spectacle poésique Tête à Tête. Samedi 25 mars 2023, c'était Bling Narsoué. Dans 2723, Sylvester Rode vient chanter avec John C. Brunach. Voici ça, c'est là pour la tonton. Artiste invité, Rouli Saint-Louis-Jean, Gary Pierre, André Froide, Anderson Davilas, Wilken Scott Fifi, Ross, Jean Dadi Simeon. Admission, 50 dollars. VIP, 100 dollars. Manger, livre, CD, tout app disponible dans Joussa. Son tour officiel, Eddie Larfim, PA, 407, 683, 2445. Nenel Essi and Hitin, 407, 403, 38, 71. Pour contact, 321, 440, 95, 97. Tant de voix qu'il dit à Liplis Edition en Noaï. Moi, c'est Tiko Alma, BPX TV Résolié, tout le all over the world. Welcome back to Talk with Jory on BPX TV. We had the honor of 
sitting with two women, beautiful icon, which is Eve from Creole Essence, as well as the beautiful, talented Felicia Ross. They inspired us so much, talking about different topics. They touch on the Haitian community, the, about colorism, about the everything that's going on they, in the business world and how to make it. You will learn so much more about them today. Stay tuned. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everything. Because this was such an engaging and um, situational workshop, I would love to have a part two. How many of us would have a part two? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so with, uh, with CC's uh, nod, we, might, we should have a part two in this event yes. and continue talking about branding yeah. and relevant and, and being intentional, right? Um, so Felicia talked about intentionality. Intentionality is key because it helps you move to the next steps, even when Tired. Yeah. And, and we're going to talk, we're going to have, right now we're having a, um, a fireside chat with Eve Carr. Eve Carr is uh, the CEO and um, co-founder of Creole Essence, which by the way is one of our sponsors. They have, they're having a $300 giveaway. Uh, so please make sure you uh, um, uh, sit at their tables right outside. Another sponsor is Patricia Canvas. For those, who love, those of us who love makeup, uh, Patricia Canvas is, is um, out there. And our other sponsor is the African Council and Black, uh, Black, Black, Blackstone Launchpad. And I really want to thank you all for, for what, uh, what you've done. So there'll be a 15, 20 minute uh, fire chat again with uh, the president and CEO, uh, Eve Carmen Perus of Creole Essence. And oh, by the way, I have, I have it right here. I have my little Creole Essence bottle right here. So for all of you, um, this, is, uh, this is very, very amazing. For, uh, how many of us ever used, uh, what is that thing called again? Louis Muscatine. Louis Muscatine. Yeah. What do you mean, what is that thing called? Not, not, just, not just Louis Muscatine, but Louis Muscatine and, and um, Vicks, right? Vicks Vapor Up, right? How many of us have used Vicks Vapor Up? Louis Muscatine and Vicks Vapor Up has yeah. superpowers. Exactly. That, you know, that can say yeah. so many things. Louis Muscatine has more. Right, so Louis Muscatine has more, right? We, we say this because we're Haitian. But again, so, it's right? Just because we're Haitian, the science says it. Right, right. She's going to break it down for you. So the science, oh, like, like uh, uh, Felicia Ross says, numbers don't lie. So the science says it in Eve Card. We'll, yeah. we'll talk about that as well. So ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, please uh, welcome Eve Card. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Long time to see you. It's been too long. I know. Yikes. Time is passing. Ça veut dire que nous avons monde. Oui, ça veut dire que nous avons brassé. That's it. So I am so excited that I get to have a chat with you today. Like yeah. you said, it's been too long. I know. Um, so one, for folks who don't know Creole Essence, we make organic and natural beauty products with ingredients from Haiti. Um, our signature ingredient is Real Masquiti, um, which is sold in over 3,000 retail doors, Ulta, Whole Foods, Goop, JCPenney, Urban Outfitters. Um, yeah. These are some of the places where you can find Haitian-made and home products that are good for your scalp and your skin. And a lot of people don't know that um, behind the company is also a, a huge social mission to create a blueprint for poverty alleviation. So thinking about how do we create work? And we started off being really focused about how do you create work in Haiti in terms of the farmers and the women, but we're also thinking about, well, who are our partners when we're working with creators, when we're hiring and we're thinking about our staff, when we're talking about Women's Month and how do you celebrate women, it's about making sure that women are in positions of power. At Creole Essence, 80% of the leadership is women. Um, you're meeting some of them who are outside, whether it's the warehouse, whether it's marketing, whether it's the director of finance, it's all women who are in charge. And it makes a difference when women are at the helm. And sure with does. that, Felicia, you have been a, a woman who's very determined and clear <laughs> on her right. mission, her purpose, and who you are as an individual. And I remember when um, I came to your house and I met your mom. Oh, God. You know, that's, the, that's Miss Popular. Everybody <laughs> loved that lady. Love her mom. <laughs> and it struck me how caring and strong she was. So when you think about who you are as a woman, what part did your mom play in that and what did you extract from her? I mean, you just said it. The honesty and the attention and the authenticity and just having love for other people too. My mother is just such a, a fire, you know, a little fire plug. She's, uh -huh. she's, so, she's so spunky and 
loving them. She wants to know about you, know about your, and supports, mm -hmm. you know, we support each other. And that's something else that my mom taught me. It was about not being a hater. Yeah. And what does that mean? Like, re not being a hater to me means, like, really believing in your own thing so much that you can celebrate other people who have the same ways. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We need that on that. Yeah. And that's not just a female thing. That's a female and male, anybody business. Yeah. Your thing, like, there's lots of limaskati in the world, but there's not coalescence that's in all those things. And when I met you, you weren't even in all those stores. Look at you scaling it up, girl. Yeah. That means there's a difference between you could sell any product. Anybody can try to be a singer. Anybody can sell a product, but it's how you yourself market it, promote it. And my mom just always taught me about my uniqueness and my, my gifts and focusing on that and also the belief and the perseverance. So I, my mother is definitely one of my biggest inspirations and, and partners in this thing, this life thing. This life thing. The other thing that struck me about your mom and thinking about how we celebrate women and how we celebrate beauty is that she's a black, dark-skinned so I wasn't expecting that. Really? No. No. So when you think about what it means to have different shades, different sizes, just pretty much the variety that it is to be a woman, mm -hmm. how did that, if any, play a role in you growing up? And in what does how does that shape your thinking around difference and colorism? Oh. I'm a big, big, big combatter of colorism. I don't play about that. Mm -hmm. It's funny because in our community, in the Haitian community, we know, unfortunately, that colorism is a terrible, horrible plague, and in the world, but in our community. And I think I really, really surprise people because people think I'm like that light skin. I think I'm better than everybody. No, I'm one del mas son cis. My family looks like you. I'm the only light skin person. <laughs> but because of that, you know, I remember, the, I'll never forget the first time I went to Haiti to perform. I was singing at a, um, it was a rooftop, I want to say it was the Best Western, it was one of those, one of that was like right when they opened that rooftop. Right. And like, I was like, in, it was like a small gathering like this so I could meet people. And I'm very like hands on when I can be. I try to always bring autographs. And so I was like waiting backstage, like let me go meet them before, because it was kind of a meeting and somebody said, oh, back up, you Jack And I was like, what? What are kids, kids like you Munsayo? That's, I, that's me, and that means, you can't mingle with those people. And I was like, what do you mean those people? Those people are me. And that was one of my number one indicators of how I needed to deal with people. And so what did I do? I pushed the person out the way. My little Jack Munoz. And and you know, I'm I think how I think and also being a mixed race woman, that's probably why you were surprised. My father is a second generation Russian American. My mother is born and raised in Haiti. So I'm mixed. So inclusion was always, and I'm half Jewish, half Catholic. My life was always about inclusion, you know? My life was always about, about acceptance. It was never a problem in my home. But when I got into the world and saw how ridiculous it was, I knew that I had to be a part of the fight about saying, eh, -eh by example. That's not, just, that's not just listening to something like, and not saying, excuse me? No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. I don't care who you are, who you think you are, whatever, with a firm face and a serious intention. I don't play. You're not telling me that. That's racist, goodbye. Calling it out. And, and also be, being within yourself, really not that way. You know, I truly don't see color. I'm like, are you nicer or mean? I don't, you know, acknowledge, although we experience it as sexism, I'm like, we're not gonna live in that space, but it exists, sorry, pay us. Women, you know what I mean? It's like, it's by living by example and appreciating the hardships people go through. If I'm light-skinned and I know that people are gonna treat you different than me, I have to acknowledge that. I can't, I can't act like, oh, that's not really, no. And I think that that's really important. And my, again, my mother, like you said, she was always very intentional about, about making sure we understood that and speaking up for people. Yeah? The other thing I remember us talking about oh. during the last oh. Oh no, battery up, move here. This battery is kind of We have a mic over there for you. Uh, oh, perfect. I remember us talking about when um, you were deciding to change your hair. Oh, and yeah. I bring these things up because these are things women have to think a lot about. And as we celebrate women and we celebrate women in business, 
just the myriad of things that we have to think about even before we get to the business side of it, <coughs> right? Right. So I remember you saying, because um, you went from, you cut it short, then your furrow, and then you went to the lots, and people had lots to say about what that would do for your career oh, yeah. and what that would do to you. So can you talk to us a little bit about your hair journey and what your hair means to you? That's a really great question. That I like that question. I forgot that, yeah. We met and I didn't have my locks yet. Nope. Wow, that was seven years ago when yeah, I locked uh -huh. up. Jesus, girl. Yeah, you've been a long time. We're getting wiser. Yeah, wiser. wiser. And I mean, yes, and still beautiful, so oh well. Yeah. Yes, um, yes, oh, yes, well. yes, yes. Yeah, you can talk to that. We don't look a day on it, we look on that. So, we still, yeah, we still, we still with them in their youth. I would answer that by saying, uh, people had a lot to say, and unfortunately, it was mainly the men in our community. That really shocked me. I'm like, what? I would have assumed it'd be people on the out outside, and even some women do, specifically in our community. Um, as all of us women know, hair is an expression. Something inside me, I literally woke up one day and then locked it. And I called my mom, she's like, what you do today? I'm like, and I walked to Flatbush and locked my hair. She's like, what? When did you decide that? I'm like, this morning when I walked over there. But something was telling me to do it. And it was also just because of my personality. I literally have had every haircut, I mean, every hairstyle so far, except uh, Death Cali, raised, mm -hmm. which I will do at some point. But I want to see myself like that, but not yet. But something was telling me to do it. And at the time, a lot of people had a lot of things to say, and they and and again, back to your fear question, they wanted me to be afraid. Oh, you're gonna not be able. To, and I and I said, I really had to look at myself. And at this point, I'd gone through the lawsuit, I'd gone through all these like life-shaking and altering things, and I thought, and it goes back to your question about branding. I'm like, if these people don't like my music anymore because I changed my hair, they're not my fan. They're not the person I want to sell to, right? They're not who I'm targeting. If you don't, out of all the work I'm doing, and all the product I'm giving you. If that's what you don't want to be my fan for anymore, please don't be my fan. Straight like that. So I think, and also once I did it, first of all, it was one of the best decisions I made for me. Because it was a me thing. So I, first of all, I love how it feels to just wake up and just walk out the door. Because, <laughs> you know, me, people think I'm like this whatever. I'm like the most tomboyish, lazy when it comes to that, like, Zuzu love thing. No, that's my mom. She loves getting her nails done and getting makeup. And she wears makeup. She used to tell me when I was a kid, she walks by herself. She puts makeup on so she could walk by herself and look at herself in the mirror. And like that. That's my mama. Me, I'm like, oh man, I got, I'm going to the show. Let me, let me put these lashes on because people can't see me as far. I gotta be cute, you know. But the, but the journey of that was important for me as a person. And then it also just, it just digged, it digged me deeper in my own branding grave in a good way. It's like, that's why now when people think me, they're like natural beauty. That's what I am. That's what I sell. That's who I am. That's what I believe in. You know, from the beginning, the whole reason we started talking is we're a people of proponents of the belief and support and system of natural beauty. And what does natural beauty mean? That don't mean you can't wear your wig and your lashes and whatever you feel good. It means that you're, you are in, engaging yourself in your own version of beauty. That's what that means. Comfort in it. Because exactly. you, know, you can add the lashes, you could add the wig, but it doesn't define you. You also know you're beautiful when you don't have it. Exactly. Yeah. It's a version of expression. It. Exactly. So back to your question, for me it was just a way to express myself and brand myself further in the direction of the things I want to be branded in and also giving me the freedom I was looking for. It's like on the aesthetic side and it's been the best thing ever. I've, I have not had more fun with a hairstyle. I haven't had more creativity with the hair and I haven't had more connection to myself. You know, because I, I did everything. Weaves, wigs, braids, fro. The fro was tough for me, I can't remember. The fro was like, the minute I stepped outside, I'm like, wait, where's my hang time? Like, I started here and then that's, you know, but there's beauty in all of it. And I, I'm just, I just urge all of us ladies and gentlemen, because sometimes we forget that men go through yes. similar, um, you know, body dysmorphia things and, they think we just want the big beard and the big muscles. I mean, that's nice too. <laughs> but you can have, you know, like, you know, Yeah, no, I like that and I can also like scrawny and, and, and no, I just like, I like people who love themselves. I like people who believe in what they do. That is definitely the sexiest thing, whether you're old, young, rich, poor, that's something my mom taught me too. My mom is like, if you got it, it's for show. That's what she used to always tell me when I was younger. 
I would always wear basketball shorts and hype myself and wear baggy clothes. And she's like, girl, if you have it, it's for show. You show it if you want to. You want to st strut your stuff in your version, you do that. And I think it's important for all of us to understand that, especially in the world that is, although there is all the problems in it, we are becoming more inclusive. We are becoming more accepting. We are becoming more understanding and I think appreciative of different styles and different people's. Just because I have natural hair doesn't mean I don't see, when I see somebody without hair or with a with shaved head or with a weave, I'm not like, yes. Mm -hmm. I just like to see people shine in their own way. And so I, yes. of course they weren't thinking about that. Mm -hmm. So th this is a luxury afforded to us that we need to take so we can be better business people because they didn't have the opportunity to do what we do either. Exactly. So, you know, it's, a, it's taking the gift and keeping it going even further and further and further. And like you said, entrepreneurship will teach you in a not nice way. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when, when it's time for you to, mm -hmm. to make a, a, a life-changing decision, it's on you and you're the only one to take responsibility for it. The accountability factor. And so what Ikar is saying I think is important because it helps you, these coaching therapy, that gives you those co the confidence and, and in therapy they call it tools. The tools, you see she's mad? Go to therapy too, I need some more of it. But the tools are imperative because they make you, they, they make, they take you, it just helps you dissect you and turn the mirror to yourself and say, maybe you can look at this another way, Fee. And I'm like, maybe she's right about that. And that's important when you're an entrepreneur because you're the one that has to have the answers. So that's very great advice. My last question to close up is, if you could pick three laws or three rules that we all had to follow in the world, what would those three rules or laws be? In the world in general? In the world in general. Oh my God. I would eradicate by saying that you could not be racist. I would erase every is or ism. Let me, let me lump it. So you couldn't be racist, you couldn't be sexist, you couldn't be classist, you couldn't be colorist. Can I lump that in one? So I would be like, you can't be prejudiced. I'll just say that. No prejudice. Don't be prejudiced against the gays, don't be prejudiced against the black, don't be prejudiced against anybody. Right? That's definitely number one. Um, and, and so it's a lot of stuff we have to do. Oh my God, we cannot do harm to someone else. I think that if we did no harm to anybody else, the whole zeitgeist of the business world and the money would be upside down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would definitely do that. So no prejudice, um, not being able to do any type of harm to an individual. Wow, what my last rule be? I think, it would be, I think it would be that in life and in our jobs, we would have to serve others. We would have to serve others. Yeah. Like everybody. everybody. Like every everybody. I think I would just, I just fix the world's problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, Felicia certainly did. What about you, though? I want to know your thing. I knew she was going to do that. Yeah, yeah, I want to know your thing. Like, <laughs> the first one, and I guess because at Creole Essence, part of what I see a lot of and part of why I started the company is around the insecurities and fears that folks have around themselves. So I think the number one law, if I could just like make it happen, is that somehow everyone loves and is the most confident version of themselves because then what you go out and do into the world, it's gonna be fire. It's gonna be magnificent. It's gonna come from a place of love because you have that confidence, stillness, and um, inspiration already in you. So that was the first one. Mm -hmm. um, the second one for me, which again correlates to why, you know, um, Creole Essence was created, is this idea that when people have their baseline needs, food, water, um, education, health, right? Maslow's hierarchy of need. When you have the base of what you need, you will start to go out and take care of other problems for others. Yeah. But when you are hungry, when you're thinking about how am I going to feed my children, you're unable to do that. So the second law would be just some, not that everyone has to make the same thing, but everyone should have baseline um, of their needs so that they can go out and change the world. And the third one would be around joy. And I think it sounds so simplistic, but there's a reason why there are so many people who are unhappy with themselves and with others. And I think when you have that joy in you, you want to give it to others, and you want, again, to make the world a better place. So I think it all goes back to really do the work for yourself, then you're a better entrepreneur, you're a better mom, dad, sister, brother, you are a better citizen of the world, and you have such joy and happiness in you. So that's what it is.
your words of wisdom and giving us an opening into your world and being um, honest and vulnerable by answering these questions because not everyone does that. And that is a gift that you also gave to us in addition to your beautiful voice and spirit. So let's all give her a round of applause. Thank you for the gems, thank you for what you do, employing women, giving us hope out here, because they need us, ladies. When you get into the business world, you're going to be like, how did this, what? They need our help. There's something, I think there's something beautiful, and we are celebrating Women's History Month, I think there's something beautiful about what it means to be a woman versus being a man. We need them too. Don't, don't just leave them out, y'all. We need them too. But there's something so beautiful when we step into the talents that you know, the, the gifts that we innately have as women. And when we like take them by the horns and like, you know, throw them into people's face and in a good way. And I think that you have done a great job in that for our community and just women in general. And so I say keep it going, girl. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for our, um, we talked about the three things, right? I'm a big fan of how close um, your circles should be so tight, right? You all talk about this, your circle, your circle of friends. But I believe your circle should be so tight that you form into a triangle. Yes. I don't serve the Illuminati, so don't go. Oh. Right? <laughs> but that triangle consists of three types of people. The person that encourages you the, to be the best of who you can be, your best self. That second person should you know, hold you accountable. So when you act a fool and mess up, say, like, why are you not being your best self, right? And then that third person should realize that it's not about you. Oh, don't take it personal. I'm terrible and, at that. And it is about your calling, right? That calling yeah. to be able to use your gifts that all of us have been given yeah. to serve this, to inspire this generation and the next. So I want to remind you, this event has been sponsored by the Idea Center, uh, the, um, the Crayol Lessons, and also the, the Advocate Council. Crayol Lessons is having a giveaway of $300 and today and Patricia's Canvas as well. So if you want to line up everyone, y'all sign up for that $300 giveaway. And um, I have free autographs for everybody that wants one. Yes, and also free autographs. And, and we also have <laughs> we also have a WhatsApp group for uh, upcoming events as well. If you want Eve Carr and Felicia Ross to do a part two of this, let us know. May is Haitian yes. Heritage Month. I appreciate you all. Uh, give yourselves a round of applause. Yes, thank you guys for joining us. So, do you want to tell us where everybody can join us for all that stuff? Yes. Welcome to Talk with Jory on BPX TV. Today we have the lovely, lovely Eve with the Creole Essence, as, as you should have heard, uh, with the L'huile Mascriti product for her hair. She's going to tell us a little bit more about it today. Eve, thank you so much for blessing us, gracing us with your presence. Please tell us a little bit more about the oil, of course, and yourself. Mm -hmm. So my name is Evie, or Evka. And it is truly a pleasure to be here and represent Creole Essence, which is all about using natural hair, skin, and body products to make sure that you feel great, but that you also create work for farmers and women in Haiti. The other thing that I love at Creole Essence is that we make sure to employ um, hundreds of women and make sure that women are in charge. You could actually see some of our team back here, Team KE, beautiful women who are here working in marketing in the warehouse. Um, and that's what we're all about, making sure we take care of our own. I love it, women empowerment. Thank you so much. Just to let you guys know, she will be sitting out with us and we will go in more details and what she is all about and the Creole essence, of course. We will learn more, much, much more. Thank you so much, stay tuned. I am head over heels over you. This is as real as it gets, okay? That's the real thing. So, you had a presentation today. First thing first, what does it mean to you? How do you feel? It was fabulous. Today we're here at the Miami-Dade College. We talked about business for artists and entrepreneurs. And that's really a passion of mine because I feel like a lot of people don't understand all the work that it goes in to producing great artists. Yes. And I manage my own company, my music production company, publishing company, trademarks company, and copyrights company. So it's good, it makes me feel good to get to share you know, the behind the scenes aspect of what makes people get to have a chance to love my music. So it's kind of bridging both of my worlds and I, I, I love teaching. I like, I like feeling like I'm doing things that are impactful for other people to make money and joy. Awesome, and that shows that you want to share the wealth, the yeah. knowledge as well, not all for you, yeah. wonderful. 
you were asked a question about burnout, which from all your titles, I'm burned out for you. Yeah. <laughs> but you said one thing that keeps you going, it's because you stay inspired. So can you tell us more a little bit about your inspiration? Man, my inspiration is the, the people I do this for, the people like you, the people like everybody watching that, you know, rely on me for a part of their joy. Mm -hmm. And their, you know, detente when they want come home from work and they put on my music and they have a glass of wine with their family and they dance with their husband or whatever it is with their children. I know that it's responsibility. And so, although, yes, I'm often burned out, mm -hmm. There's something so electric about the inspiration I get from my fans and supporters. And I'm lucky because I get that instant gratification yes. shot. And a lot of entrepreneurs don't have that opportunity. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And I'm also like real. Some days I don't feel Girl. my best, but I still just take me as I am because I'm a human being. And I think my fans really give me that opportunity. They, they understand that. That is awesome. So you basically get recharged, refueled by your fans' love exactly. and how the effect you have on us. Thank you. Yes. One more thing you touched on, which is colorism, oh. that is major. And just tell us a little bit more about having your father being white, your mom being not just black, but dark skin. How do you feel so comfortable in your skin and to be like, yeah, I'm who I am and that's it, there's no colors? Well, let's go back to the initial point. Colorism, it exists and it's bad and it exists a lot in the Haitian community, and it's wrong. Let's just start there. Um, light is not better than dark. Dark is not better than light. I'm not better than you, you're not better than me. We're all just people, so that's one thing. Second thing, I'm so comfortable because I, I've been afforded the opportunity to live in a home where I see light skin, dark skin, people everywhere in between, and for us, we just live like that, and that's our family. But stepping out in the world, I really see, and watching my own family members experiencing it. My brother, who's darker skinned than me, was discriminated against more than I was. So you lived it, you I experienced see, it. I've seen it. My mother, all the things that she experienced as a dark skinned woman in Haiti, and the way she would tell me about the way she got treated versus other people, or the way they would attempt to try to treat her because she don't play that. And you know, it's just, I'm very, 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 very vocal about social issues and about my stance. Please don't confuse it. Colorism is wrong and I don't agree with it. Period. That's how I go. I don't agree And that's with why I love her. I don't agree with racism, sexism, colorism, any ism, classism, any ism. People who are diplomats are not better than, you know, that's marchand. Right. People right. who are artists are not better than civilians. People are, that are put presidents are not better than their citizens. Women are not subordinate to men. No, we're not. People, exactly. So all these things, I like to be very clear. Because I think in the world, people are afraid to tell the truth. Because they don't want to lose a dollar or yeah. lose a friend. Face the consequences. I don't care about that. Because I know where I stand and I know what I stand behind. Your so, belief is your belief and you stand strong no matter what. No compromising. Yeah. No, because especially in my opinion, my beliefs are all inclusive to everybody. I'm, my beliefs are not discriminatory. My beliefs are not hurting another person. So and I that's who makes you who you are as well. Yeah, it does. Wonderful. And I, and I really mean that. And you know, just saying it is one thing, but yes. how you treat people yes. is the real your daily testament. Actions. Daily. How yes. you treat people in the street, how you treat your own family, how you treat yourself. Yep. So I, Behind I closed that. doors, how yeah. do you really treat the people that work with you, work for you? That is a testament exactly. of who you truly are. Exactly. You are wonderful, amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And that was Felicia Ross on BPX TV with Talk With Jory. Thank you. Here you have it, folks. I am so honored. I am so thrilled. What a wonderful experience. Not only one, but two of a beautiful Haitian women that spoke on our behalf. And for this month of History Month, to have these women empower us, talk to us about business, how they were inspired, how they can inspire us. I hope you learned a thing or two today because I got very inspired. So on behalf of the show, Talk With Jory and BPX, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon. Stay tuned for our next show. Welcome to Talk.
Talk with Jory on BPX TV. Wonderful. I'm so proud of you. Yes, yeah. Fabulous. Today we're here at the Miami Gate College. We talked about uh, with the real masculinity product for her hair. She's gonna tell us a little bit more about it today. Eve, thank you so much for blessing us, gracing us of your presence. Oh, it's uh, March, the month of women's international. <laughs> 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 